Welcome, and in this session, we're going to read from Mark chapter 9. And this is one of my favorite portions of Scripture, the transfiguration. We're going to be talking about the transfiguration of the Lord. We're going to be talking about how Jesus um, healed a boy that was possessed by an evil spirit. We're going to be talking about how Jesus predicted his death a second time, what he said about those who are for him as opposed to those who are against him, and what he says about those who actually cause other people to sin. So let's start off with verse 1. He said to them, okay, so Jesus is speaking to the disciples here. Most certainly I tell you, there are some standing here who will in no way taste death until they see God's kingdom come with power. Why did he, what's he talking about? And why did he say there are some? Why some and not all? He's talking to his disciples here. And there, are, there were some of the, the, of the disciples that were going with him a week later. And, uh, and they were going to experience something very, very glorious. Okay, Not all of the disciples. And this is something that I like to, I, I talk about this a lot. Because it is a very, very important point when you're reading New Testament scriptures. Read Peter, James, and John's books first before reading anybody else's books because they're the ones that got exclusive access to a lot of these very wonderful experiences with with the Lord. So they knew the Lord better than any of the other ones did. They got the inside, inside circle, okay? If the 12 disciples were the inside circle, well, the Peter, James, and John were the exclusive inside of the inside circle. So they, they were the closest to the Lord. They knew the Lord Obviously, they would know the Lord better than anybody else. Uh, so their writings would reflect that, okay? Do, do yourself a favor and read the writings of Peter, James, and John and compare it with the other writings from the other disciples. And you'll see something that Peter, James, and John has in common. with, with You'll see that they have a certain tone, Whereas the other uh, disciples, or even Paul himself, has a different tone, okay? Keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind. The word, the scriptures, my dear friends, are very dynamic. They're not static. They're very dynamic, okay? Remember that. They're very dynamic. Every book is different than the other. Every scroll is different than the other. Every author is different than the other. Everything has a different place, and a different authority, okay? So he said, most certainly I tell you, there's some of you, some of you that will in no way taste death. You're not going to die until you see God's kingdom come in with power, okay? And then the next verse starts to explain what's going on here. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. There we go. Peter, James, and John again. Exclusive access and brought them up onto a high mountain privately by themselves, and he was changed into another form in front of them. So he was changed into another form. His clothing became glistening, exceedingly white, like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. Now, it is possible to experience the Lord in this kind of way. Even there's there's been many people throughout the ages that have experience the Lord in this way. I've read so many different testimonies, heard so many, so many different testimonies. And as I've shared, I, I encourage you to go back and listen to uh, one of my, uh, the teachings that I've done uh, in, through the book of Matthew in regards to the same, this exact same event. Uh, I, I, I go into a whole uh, testimony of myself of how uh, I experienced something that was uh, similar to this, and this is just uh, absolutely awesome, okay? It will leave you absolutely changed and uh, just stunned, okay? Um, what happened was shortly after I got born again in 1992, shortly after um, these experiences, shortly after I came out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, uh, one of the, one of the uh, 
at that point in time, he was almost like a mentor to me. He was a, he was a he was a young uh, gentleman, a friend of mine who would really encourage me in the Lord. And one day I met him on the streets, and he said to me. He said, I had a dream about you last night. I said, oh, yeah? What, what, what's your dream? He said, I'm not going to tell you. He said, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you this. It's a warning from the Lord. Don't go around people that are drinking. Don't go around these party atmospheres like this kind of stuff that you used to be in. The kind of stuff that you used to be in, okay? He said, don't hang out with these kind of people. Don't go around with these this kind of stuff that's going on, just you know, party animals or whatever it is. Just don't go in that atmosphere. He says, if you listen to me on that, you would do fine. Well, you know, there was another, there was another friend of mine, uh, you know, from the dark days that, uh, uh, that I always told him, especially after I came in to the kingdom of light, uh, I told him, you know, no matter what happens to you, whenever you need any help, just come and I'll be there for you no matter what, no matter what, you know, um, you know, whenever you need me, just you know, call me or come come to my place and uh, I'll help you as much as I can, whenever, just anytime, doesn't matter. Anytime of the day or night, just do it. Well, lo and behold, one night he came knocking on my door. It was like late at night. It was like 11 o'clock, right? And I'm just a teenager. So I, at that point in time, I go out with him and he lived not too far from me. So I, we had to go to his place and I went to his place, walked into his place and here it was one of, my, uh, it was another guy that I knew there and him, and they were all sitting around this table drinking, okay? And they were saying, man, we need you back, because I used to be in a, um, a band with, with, uh, with these guys, um, especially one of them. We were very uh, committed. And he's like, man, we need you. We can't do it without you. We need you to come back and, you know, come back to the band and, and do what you do. Uh, you know, just just come back. We can't we can't do without you, man. We we need you. You know, come back. You know, come back. You were begging me to come back. Uh, and so I said, you know what? I will come back on one condition: that everything we do is to the glory of God. And when I said that, they were like, oh, they were like, they were like, oh yeah, okay, okay. And they kind of just thought, okay. Obviously, I, we can't get anywhere with this guy. So I sat around, talked with him a little bit, and then I left and went home. When I went home, it was like I really felt really bad because I felt like I was back in this old scene again. Like just I felt really, really horrible. I felt like the Lord left me. I felt like there was really empty inside, really dirty, uh, spiritually dirty. You know, I felt really, really horrible. And so... Um, I'm praying and it's like from the time I got born again to that time I don't know how many months it was a period of maybe months and you know I just experienced you know just feeling God with me his peace his love and all this kind of stuff and all of a sudden I just felt like he was gone and it was just a horrible horrible feeling of dryness spiritual dryness and emptiness and it was just a horrible feeling. And I went through the whole night like that. I went to sleep and woke up and I still felt bad. Woke up in the morning. And I was sitting on my bed. And I had the Bible open in front of me. And I had a song playing in the background. Uh, and it was actually the song, um, Jesus, Your Presence Makes Me Whole. And um, I was listening to the music and, and I was reading the scriptures, Revelation chapter 1 where the Apostle John explains the, the appearance of Jesus when, G, when Jesus appeared to him. Very, very similar to this. Uh, except Paul, uh, excuse me, John said that, you know, the Lord appeared to him and, you know, his, his, his uh, countenance was like, you know, he was as white as snow, his hair was white as snow, his eyes of fire. And it says his face shone as bright as the sun. And so I'm still feeling horrible and empty and dirty and all this kind of stuff. And I'm sitting on my bed and I'm reading this. I'm listening to this beautiful music playing. And the sun was shining through my window. And I was sitting on the bed and I thought, let me just, I, I want to not just, I don't want to just read the scriptures and just go through it. 
you know, fast without really getting what it says. I want to get every, I want to soak up everything I can out of these scriptures. So I thought, what, how bright is the sun? Like, let me, let me have another peek. So I looked down, you know, kind of looked down because the sun was shining down in the window, right? I looked down and I thought, wow, you know, I look at, and I look at the, at the Bible and read it again. His face shone as bright as the sun. Looked down, looked, and a few times, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it was like the Lord appeared to me. All of a sudden, it's like I saw him in this glory, in this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful glory. Nothing can... The only words I can use is just wonderful glory, splendor, extravagant glory, beauty, like like just beyond. And it was such a powerful experience. I started weeping, and I wept and I wept and I wept. I had some tissue by, by me. And I was just grabbing the tissue and just wiping my face, wiping my face. And this went on and on and on and on and on. I had tissue all over my bed. I was like, wow. It's like I had I used so much, just weeping so much. And from that time until this time, I never felt that is like I did the night the night before. Uh, and so it was just a wonderful reintroduction kind of like uh, of the Lord into my life. And it was kind of like God was saying to me, I, I'm honoring you. I'm honoring your decision for not going back. Because you see, God said, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Then I will be a father to you and then you will be my sons and daughters. So I stood my ground. I was alone. I was alone. And I had my these other guys there, you know, drinking and doing all this kind of stuff. And I stood my ground in the Lord. And I felt like the Lord was just like, you know, you know, just just his way of 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 showing how much he how much I don't know. Like what more can I say? It's, it is possible to experience what Peter, James, and John experienced today. It's possible to experience what John experienced in the book of Revelation today. It's possible. I'm telling you, it's possible. And it is a life-changing experience. It's not just some kind of... a imagination or something like that. No, 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 no. It is life changing. Okay. Verse four, Elijah and Moses appeared to them. So they come back from hundreds of years of being gone. They come back hundreds, over a thousand years for Moses, Elijah, how many hundreds of years he's been gone. And all of a sudden now he's, he showed up on the mountain with Jesus. And Peter, again, Peter jumps at it and says, you know, like he's, he's, he's always the one to speak, the first one to speak up, the first one to do stuff, right? He's, 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 he's right in there, right? He's, ju- he's jumping on every opportunity. So Peter said, answer Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. I was like, wow, yeah, oh, well, yeah, it really is good for us to be here. Uh, let's, make us, let's make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Yeah, let's make three tabernacles, right? Wow. We know Moses had a tabernacle. Moses here, he had a tabernacle back in the back in the day. He had a tent. Let's make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he didn't know what to say, for they were very afraid. Verse 7, a cloud came, overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, there they saw no one with them anymore except Jesus only. As they were coming down from the mountain, he he commanded them that that they should tell no one what things they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Again, Jesus says, shh. They kept this saying to themselves, questioning what the risen from the dead meant. Hmm. 
So they were trustworthy people. They were trustworthy. They were loyal to Jesus. They, they didn't tell anybody. Verse 11, they asked him, saying, Why do the scribes say that, Mo, that Elijah must, must come first? And he said to them, Elijah indeed comes first and restores all things. How it is written of the Son of Man, about the Son of Man, that he should suffer many things and be despised. But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they have and they have done, they have also done to him whatever they wanted to, even as it is written about him. So in other gospels as well, it makes it very clear that Jesus here is talking about John the Baptist. Even though John the Baptist said in another another passage, he, he said to himself, he said that he's not Elijah. Jesus said he is Elijah. You know, figuratively speaking, John is the Elijah to come, the, you know, the Elijah to prepare the way uh, of the Lord. Um, in Malachi 2, saying the Elijah will come, turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the, children, the hearts of the children to the fathers. Coming to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes questioning them. Immediately all the multitude, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and running to him, greeting, greeted him. He asked the scribes, what are you asking them? One of the multitude answered, Jesus, I brought to you my son who was a mute spirit and wherever it, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and wastes away. I asked your disciples to cast it out. And they weren't able. Jesus answered him, Unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. They brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and fell to the ground, wallowing and foaming at the mouth. He asked his father, How long, is he, how long has it been since this has come to him? He said, from childhood, often it has cast him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, I have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out with tears, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that, a multitude came Running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, and then I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him greatly, it came out of him. The boy became one like one dead, so much that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up, and he arose. When he came into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we cast it out? He said to them, This kind can come out by nothing except by prayer and fasting. They went out from there and passed through Galilee. He didn't want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples and said to them, the Son of Man is being handed over to the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, on the third day he will rise again. Like How many times did Jesus say this to his disciples, and still they just didn't understand? How many times, right? Verse 32 here again says, But they didn't understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. Verse 33, He came to Capernaum, Kafir Nahum, uh, the village of Nahum, that would be, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing among yourselves? What were you arguing among yourselves on the way? But they were silent, for they had disputed with one another on the way about who was the greatest. Who's the greatest of the disciples? Who's the greatest? Who's the one who's the, who's the greatest, right? So he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, if, if any man wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. He took a little child 
and set him in the middle of them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives such one such little child in my name, in other words, if you receive this child by my authority, in my instruction, in my place, you receive, he receives me. So whoever receives one, of the, one such little child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me doesn't receive me, but him who sent me. Verse 38, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone who doesn't follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he doesn't follow us. Jesus said, Don't forbid him. For there is no one who will do a mighty work in my name and, will, and be able quickly to speak evil of me. For whoever is not against us is on our side. For whoever will, cu- will give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you are Christ or because you belong to the Messiah, because you are Mashiachs, most certainly I tell you he will in no way lose his reward. In other words, every little thing you do for somebody, keeping in mind Jesus, doing it for Jesus, you will never lose your reward. Every little thing will be counted. Verse 42. Whoever will cause one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, okay, to sin, it would be better for him if he were to if he were thrown into the sea with a millstone hung around his neck. If your hand causes you to stumble or sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life maimed without a hand than to have your two hands and go into hell, Gehenna, into unquenchable fire. Keep in mind, I know some people would say, well, you know, hell, you just go there and get burned up and you're done. Or hell is temporary. Nowhere, nowhere in Scripture, nowhere does it say it's temporary. Not even people who said they've been to hell. I've never heard anybody ever say that it's temporary. Even so, we go by the scriptures and nowhere does it say it's temporary. It all says it's eternal. Keep in mind that those who go to hell will be tormented spiritually. Their soul will be tormented in the fire. Their soul is not made of material, earthly material that can burn, but soul can feel fire, the, the, the pain of fire. That's how it works. That's how you can be tormented forever and never burn because you don't have anything to burn, but you do have that. You have the, your feelings all about you. You have, it is your soul and your spirit. Verse 44, where the worm doesn't die and the fire is not quenched. And that is in Isaiah 66, 24. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life lame rather than having your two feet and be cast into hell. Gehenna. Into the fire which will never be quenched. Where their worm doesn't die and their fire is not quenched. In the NU uh, manuscripts omits verse 46. For if your eye causes you to stumble, cast it out. It's better for you to enter into God's kingdom with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into the Gehenna of fire. Where their worm doesn't die and the fire is not quenched. Again, Isaiah 66 verse 24. For everyone who will be salted with fire and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, with what will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Finally, I want to say that Jesus talks about salt here. Salt is used as a preservative primarily in those days, not as a taste enhancer. Today we've tra- traded salt for sugar. I'm calling on the church to throw out the sugar and get back the salt. May God give you wisdom, understanding, and knowledge as you think about what was read today. Remember to 
like the like this and follow you know subscribe and uh i always check back for new videos uh lord willing we'll put up a new video almost every day thanks again for watching and god bless you